Hello folks and welcome back to my shop here in Northwest Colorado. We got a special project this time with a herringbone design. I've gone ahead and prepped our material here in the warmth of the shop. We're going to be using Wenge, Bloodwood, and Yellowheart. And we'll be assembling it in a pattern like this. In order to do this, we'll have to create a herringbone in a round shape. This is the basis for it. Those are the specifications, so you can make your own. I start by gluing those triangles up. This is all test material in the pairs. I'll then glue those pairs. One of these is loose here. Not sure which one. There it is. I'll glue those pairs up to test fit. Your last pair should go in nice and tight, nice and tight, as you saw. There you go. So that you end up with the herringbone going in a ring. We'll start cutting up our material and gluing this up, make our foundation, and move on. Eight segments of each color will get us going on our foundation ring. We'll glue those pairs up on a flat surface. This will give us a nice lap joint that's flush. After gluing these, we'll make sure to remove the spot of glue in the joints that form the 90. Here we're getting ready to glue our pairs up into our ring. Our first pair are going together, making sure that our lap joint is nice and flush from the inside to the out. About halfway through doing our foundation ring here. And uh, again, making sure that lap joint is nice and flush. Points coming together on the inside and out. And uh, make sure to clean up our glue every time. This is important to keep that raw wood surface for the next glue up. And our last pair to make our foundation ring. I call this our foundation ring because it has to meet three requirements in order to keep building off of it. Um, all your lap joints have to be flush from the outside in. But one thing, you have to have 90 degrees on every lap joint. And final, all points must touch a flat surface when sat down. Foundation met those requirements, so let's increase our stop just a little bit, moving from a triangle to an isosceles trapezoid, and giving us a little bit of a pitch to our vessel. Inspection for blade wobble and what have you. Sometimes it takes a little bit of sanding. Here our segment will be hanging over slightly to the outside. You saw I checked my lap joint first thing to make sure it's flush all the way in and out. And of course, glue removal. This isn't really important on the outside, but I just like it to look pretty. And moving along, next one. Once all the wenge was on, we're moving to the next color, which is some bloodwood. That was cut at the same length. That for every 16 pieces, we'll complete a ring and we'll grow a little bit more every time. Let's see. 
16 and then that 8 coming out again making 16 with that color you can look in the center and see that we're coming up and growing out until finally we're going to end up with a blank here it looks like this ain't that a beaut <clears throat> Did 10, even though we have a pattern of three, so that way the top ring and bottom ring would be the same. There's our foundation ring that made it all possible. We gotta fill in this bottom so we know that we're 90 degrees. We can cut small segments with 90 degrees and then simply connect the dots. We'll take that excess off on this little guy. Shining a light down across the disc gives us a very definite view of our line. We just ease it in, keeping it parallel until we like it. We'll check our fit. We know the 90 is good. We just need to make sure that it matches up to the next segment. And if we like it, we move on. Glue them all in when we like it at the end. We'll end up with something like this. And a little flattening to true up the bottom on the lathe. We're ready to move on. Here I'm gluing up some veneer into a laminate. And my apologies, folks, but this laminate is for the rings, and I had a major problem with the footage that of the day I did the rings. So this is about it that you get to see for the rings. But there's been a lot of rings made, though. All right, we got everything ready for glue up to the lathe so we can get going on turning. Starting with a waste block mounted to a face plate. This will be our base ring for our pedestal. Followed by three pieces of veneer laminated together. Second ring. Another piece of laminate, three pieces of veneer laminated together. Our vessel, which I left mounted to the chuck for centering, top and bottom. Afterwards, we can fill in our rim. These are the same pieces, just larger, that we did at the bottom. We know it's 90 degrees, right there and then connect the dots. I want to top our vessel with a lid and a different type of finial. We'll see how that turns out, huh? Alrighty, let's get this thing glued together so we can start turning. Again, my most sincere apologies about the video footage for these rings. I just had some major equipment problems <laughs> the day I was filming the building of these rings and the glue up of the finial. And I was having problems with sound also on my equipment. Anyways, moving on, I thought there was plenty of rings that have been built on the internet that you can look up how to do these common segmented rings. So I wasn't too upset. Hopefully you are not upset too much anyways. I'm lining up these rings here with a compass, as you can see, making sure that each way is equal. 
And here comes the vessel blew up. In my head, I was designing the points to line up with the laminate, but in reality, I didn't like it, so I turned it. And finally, our rim segments. We're going to glue these up with a decent amount of glue. Just making sure that our edges and points come all together. Joints look good and always clean up that excess glue. And then finally, the last one to create something to turn finally. And here we're going to shape our pedestal up a little bit. Getting us close to a 90 down to that shoe down there at the bottom. And then we're going to give our very, very short stem a little definition in here. liking the shape and everything we got going here on the outside as far as I can see so on to the inside
I just love how the wenge came out above the herringbone design. But I had a slight oversight on my part when roughing out the outside. And since our wall thickness is set up, we're going to have to take the rim down. So we'll mount the steady rest back up, take this rim down, just exposing the top of the herringbone. Made it a little change in design, but that's all right. After putting a finish on, we're going to set it aside to fully cure before we take that waste block off the bottom. While that's fully curing, we're going to move on to the lid. Now with a finish to the bottom of our lid, we're ready to move on to the top. We're going to remount onto some cold chucks here, cold jaws. And then we're going to tap out this mortise for the finial first before shaping the top. I found that a half inch drill bit works rather well to get rid of the threads and gives you a nice clean surface for your mortise. And a quick shape here. Getting close. Liking how that's coming out here. I was amazed at how true this lid came back around on these cold jaws here. You can see here as I ease in the final shape. Right here at the bottom, 
and bring it down after we finish the top liking it liking it keep it smooth and boom look at that ain't she a beaut so now with the finish on the top i put blue tape to preserve raw wood in our mortise we're going to move on to the finial Once we like the shape, we'll have a quick sanding here. We also have some blue tape over our tenon to preserve fresh wood for our mortise. We'll dismount, bring over to our chop saw, and with the use of a toggle clamp, we'll keep our fingers safe back behind it. A little bit of sanding on this top, but we want that crisp edge. Look there, yep. And we'll apply finish. Once the finish is applied, we'll dismount and remount our vessel to be taken off our waste block. Make sure that she runs true here. Oh yeah. All right, let's get rid of this block.
So while finish is curing on the base of our vessel, we'll go ahead and glue our finial in. The toothpick you see in the background I use to apply glue to our mortise. We lock it in where we like it, and we have a finished project.